And hello, everybody. Welcome to the Light Consciousness Expo live today. And I am your host, Kathleen Sherman. Um, and again, this is for the Light Consciousness Expo that's going to be taking place in Sarasota, Florida, May 14th and 15th of 2022. And I'm so excited today to be introducing Kevin Lee on with me. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Miss Kathleen. Good to meet you. Good to see you, meet you. I'm excited to meet you in person at the show. Um, yeah. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go ahead really quick and just um, play an audio of um, what you can expect at the show. It's 2022 and time to rock the airwaves and raise vibrations. The Light Consciousness Expo, now in its second annual year, is bigger and better than ever. Come join us May 14th and 15th, 2022 at the Sarasota Event Center for two days of powerful speakers and psychic mediums who will share insights, forecasts, and divine channel messages. Enjoy 45 plus exhibitors, over 32 workshops, top intuitive readers, astrologers, and a variety of vendors and holistic products, along with four special keynote speakers. Experience deep trance messages with Aerith and Sherry and America's most loved medium, Joseph Labruto III, Kathleen Sherman, a medical intuitive and energy healer, and Kevin Lee, a motivational speaker and international best-selling author. Immerse yourself in a joyous, diverse atmosphere where authors, artisans, psychic readers, energy healers, and more gather together to create and share their unique gifts with you. Presented by Sherry Lord, an internationally recognized channel and speaker. Get complete event access with a $10 one day or $15 weekend pass wristband to our exhibitors hall and 25 free workshops and speakers. There is an additional fee for some speaker events. Discounts given to everyone who registers early and online and tickets will be available at the door. Information and conference tickets available at SherryLord.com. So sign up now and come join us for a fun, energetic, and life-changing event. Again, it's the Light Consciousness Expo, May 14th and 15th, 2022, at the Sarasota Event Center in beautiful Sarasota, Florida. See you there. Awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. beautiful. So is it okay if I read your bio really quick? <laughs> no, go for it. That's fine. Bragging awesome. So Kevin Lee um, is an international best-selling author, media personality, conscious business coach, motivational speaker, and spiritual intuitive. Uh, attending his enlightening programs and powers um, by teaching topics like purpose, leadership, business, um, entrepreneurialism, service to others, gratitude, and self-love. His mind and body spirit teachings include consciousness, the soul self, death and dying, and the afterlife. Is featured on NBS, NBC, Fox, and Chicago News. This two times spiritual author's latest international number one, that's awesome, best selling book, Your Divine Purpose, A Journey to Fulfillment and Legacy, has earned high praise from readers. He has also produced with two professional meditation albums. He can also be found in his podcast, Live with Kevin Lee, interviewing leaders, luminaries, and sharing enlightening lessons for his audiences. So excited to be talking to you today and bringing you on. and sharing your light out with everybody and Thank i'm you. so honored to be a part of that today ditto i'm very just delighted to be a part of this expo just delighted to have been approached to be able to share what spirit has brought to me and through me from me every day and uh it's just uh, it's always a blessing i always say this it is such a blessing when we can stand on any platform no matter if there's five people in the audience or a hundred or a thousand and just to be able to share what spirit brings to us. And so this means a lot to me because at the heart of everything I do, spirit is behind it. And uh, and spirit changed my life. That's a whole nother story. Part of it's in my book. <laughs> and uh, it's been an incredible journey. So I'm just delighted to be here to serve and to shine with you all. Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about your books? Absolutely. So I just happen to have it right here. <laughs> so anyway, this, uh, this book, I, you know, I am very proud of my international status, uh, because that was not expected. And uh, that came about because for many years, uh, I have traveled and spoken to different churches, communities, spiritual centers and whatnot. And I 
because of my connections internationally, I had a lot of buyers during my book launch. So Amazon sent me a nice letter and I got screenshots and all that fun stuff. And, uh, and I reached a nice higher level. I was just looking for number one in my category. And, uh, but I, but even more, more important than that, the feedback has been really wonderful because in the book, I get, I take us through a dark valley of my life. I get very raw. <laughs> my book coach talked me into it. And, uh, you know what? I think it made me more human. I think it made me more relatable and my, my readers, my viewers, my, my clients and the people that I know, they saw parts of me that I've never really shared publicly because I thought, you know what, it's time to stand in that authentic Kevin self and to remind people I'm a human being. I grew up on a farm. Uh, I have achieved a lot of things, but that's because I've sacrificed a lot of things and I've, and I set goals for myself, but I also have a passion and I know that that passion is my purpose, which is why I entitled it uh, your divine purpose, because so many people are unfulfilled and people want to be remembered. And that's why I brought in the concept of legacy, the light inside of me that was brought to me by spirit. I pass that on to the candle of you. And then hopefully you as my student, my client, my, uh, my followers will pass that light on to another person. And so that light never diminishes. It, it's just simply eternally rippling out into the universe. So those are some of the concepts that I speak about in my book and, uh, and share with you, uh, you know, at least one of two uh, mystical experiences that profoundly changed my life and set me on this trajectory. That's amazing. And I, I too have some wild and crazy stories of awakening and <laughs> going through wow. the dark nights of the soul and things like that. Um, when, it, you know, just offhand, is there anything that you could recommend to people if they're really having a tough time in life right now, especially with retrogrades and the energy rising on the earth and feeling Oh, you know, anxiety and all those things. Are there some things that you could recommend to people to help them with those? Get to get through that. I, well, you you know, you really hinted at it when you the the choice of words you use, which is basically these people are in fear, right? And we know that acronym, false evidence appearing real, the illusion of of our reality. Well, and I use that word loosely, but the illusion of of the physical planet we live on and the situations we're dealing with, we may view them as destructive, chaotic, uh, doors closing in our face, opportunities take, being taken away. But I guarantee you, we are all, not just me, not just you, every single person on the planet is here for a divine purpose. Their soul has chosen to in incarnate. And so if you're still breathing, I joke about it, but if you woke up and took a breath, you have purpose. There is something you have got to do on this planet. And not just one thing, it could be multiple. But we need to step out of this concept of fear and being in living in fear and worry and concern, sadness, hopelessness. That's that is living in the vibration, of, not of the light, but being in the lack of light. You're being in a in a very uh, I don't want to say, yes, that's the word, poverty consciousness. We're in a state of poverty consciousness, and we have to realize the universe is abundant. And, you know, uh, it's kind of funny because I was literally this morning reading this book on uh, the dynamic laws of prosperity by Catherine Ponder. And I was thinking about how abundant the universe is and how can I build these principles into my speeches because uh, we are here to do great things. And and even if, I believe it was Mother Teresa, and she said, if you can't do great things, do something in a great way, right? And that could be just for one person today, one person this month. And that's, we, it's not that we have to achieve uh, hundreds of things in our lifetime. It, it, as long as we're happy and we're focused uh, in a spiritual way on serving ourselves, because Lord knows we forget to serve ourselves. We're always serving others. But uh, also just recognizing spirit is behind everything. Spirit was behind my book. Spirit guided me to write this book. And I could feel that pressure. I call it like a spiritual wind. There was something that followed me. 
it was like a shadow of some sorts. It was a something palpable. And I could feel, write the book, write the book, write the book. You need to write the book. I thought, okay, let me sit down. Let me find a coach and write a book. And you know what? It, what's curious was the program I signed up for over a year ago, June of last year, was called Write Your Bestseller in Nine Weeks, right? I wrote my book in five weeks because spirit channeled my book through me. It was uncanny how it came through. Why did that happen? Because I stopped focusing on the process of writing a 15 chapter bestseller, getting me on Oprah kind of book. And I focused on spirit. Here's your opportunity. I'm opening the door. I love you. You know my heart. I'm here to shine and receive what bring it to me, through me and from me. And I'm telling you, it literally poured through me onto the paper. And I try to teach my students that all the time. Step out of fear. Don't worry about the lack in life and start focusing on, you know, the angels walk with you. You know, your loved ones are standing there walking with you. Ask them for support. They're waiting for your support. And they cannot really necessarily impose their will on us. We have free will. But they, they definitely know that we have soul contracts. And so they'll speak to councils. They've told me this. They speak to a higher council to make sure we're on our path. Our, our divine blueprint is being un, is unfolding in, in the right direction. So they'll open doors, close doors, kind of nudge us. I hate to say like mice in a maze. But uh, in a way, it's a gracious spiritual nudging <laughs> in a maze. Uh, so they're getting us to our purpose. And we just have to be willing to listen and trust spirit. Trust our higher selves, if that's something that you focus upon. Trust God, Goddess, whatever you call that source. There is something guiding us all. And that is one of the most uh, powerful lessons I learned as a student, now as a mentor, as a medium, as a minister, trusting that what is brought to me, who is brought to me, even you, even this expo, there is something. This experience is a stepping stone for my greatness somewhere in the future. I don't know how. But I said yes when, interestingly, and I probably hadn't shared this with anyone, for months before I said no to multiple uh, requests to speak because I was focusing on myself. But I could feel there was something important in this expo that spirit needed me to show up at. And so I said yes. That's beautiful. Yes. That's beautiful. Can you help others that are, because abundance, um, the, the word abundance, people automatically think of money. And I know you talked about other things, but in the basic law of attraction, um, you know, we're basically taught that abundance really comes from within and that there's never, like we all have the ability to make money. We all have the ability to make exorbitant amounts of money if yes. we choose to or you know and that doesn't always have to be money it can also be in uh, just like you said in wealth and other ways of your life being having the, the person that you know is your soulmate or twin flame with you or uh, can you expand on that a little bit in sure. how people block themselves from their own abundance in many different ways absolutely so abundance so we know that's about plenty and prosperity having overflow in our life and I grew up Southern Baptist, so I have a lot of Bible references. Plus, I've gone through seminary and extensive five, it was almost five years. And uh, so in my, when we, in, when we were taught to interpret uh, biblical scripture, we, we it really at the premise of so many uh, um, Judeo-Christian scriptures is, the, is that concept of wealth is our birthright. And when you go back and if you're willing to open your mind to looking beyond the words to sense what they're really trying to say in the examples and the stories of those great prophets or what we call mediums today, the mystics, and they were trying to remind the people on the journey, on the path, they are powerful beyond measure. God works through every single person. And all we have to do is basically stand in gratitude. Gratitude is a tremendous uh, vibration of manifestation in our life. In fact, I, I speak about gratitude constantly. And it's one of the things I teach my students is that in order to be abundant, we need to start uh, returning to that inner dialogue with our higher self, that Christ in mind, allowing that Christ nature to, to come to us and through us, and really just stepping into the process of being grateful for. I'm grateful that Kathleen has given me this opportunity to shine my light 
to whomever needs to receive it today. I am grateful for uh, the Sherry Lord for this opportunity to ingather people who have now have a safe community to express themselves, to receive teachings, to uh, to receive divine guidance or to receive healing, to receive the services they they need for greater things in life. So there's this ripple and this these waves of light that emanate all around us. And if we will stand in the moment and simply be grateful for, I'm grateful for the breath I just took. I'm grateful my body is not in pain. I'm grateful I have a job that invests in my dreams, my side hustle. I'm grateful that I have a significant other. I'm grateful all of these simple things. Even my friends laugh at me because I do it. Literally, I do it when I'm out walking around with them. But I'll say, thank you, parrots. I hear you. Thank you, butterfly. I see you. It, what, you know, people may laugh. The muggles will laugh. And your friends may laugh at you, but you have to realize that if we can recognize God is expressing through every single opportunity, the divine creator, the essence of the universe is trying to give us little signals of, of beauty and, and amazing fragrances or amazing moments where the wind touches us and we suddenly feel vivified. We feel renewed in our spirit just for some from some fleeting encounter that is spirit moving to you around you and for you so we have to be grateful we have to start recognizing what spirit is trying to say to us and the the i don't know what to call it here in the moment but i'll say this there is a secondary effect to that it begins to enhance your intuitive nature because we are literally living in a psychic universe. We are an expression of that universe. We are literally psychic beings. How often do you hear that coming from a preacher? And we literally are an expression of the stars of the universe. And the universe, that intuition is literally when we are aware of what God has to say to us or spirit or spirits. Uh, and I like to teach that principle because it just shows it shows the listener and the viewer that they are more powerful than they ever realized. It's already inside. That's why everything was hidden. There's an, actually a joke. Uh, where did God hide the soul? Well, he didn't put it under a rock. He put it inside us because that's the last place we'd look. And it's really true. We do everything focused outward for others, uh, to others, on behalf of others. And we just constantly do not look it within. And so I really want to encourage us to find abundance, to find prosperity, and to really embody gratitude in a, in a I'm not going to say ritualistic way, but I'll say in a habitual way. It needs to become part of your nature, right? That you're grateful for random acts of, of spirit contact, if you want to call it that, right? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. It makes me think of when I was awakening, I worked in a building that had a lot of spirits and a lot of all kinds of activity oh, cool. that way. And I went for a walk outside and I would get a breather there because it felt heavy and dense there. Mm -hmm. And I'd walk outside and I'd walk through the trees and, you know, just kind of oh. be quiet. And one day, um, one day I could have swore, I could have swore to God that the leaves were smiling and waving and going, hi, hi. And I was like, hi, oh my God, that's so amazing. And I went, oh, oh crazy. But yeah. it, no, it's not. It's those types of, when you feel those types of things come in and you feel that joy from nature, that's mm -hmm. nature talking to you. You know, that's. And that's I want to tell, tell you something because you probably have never heard this, but we have, we do, we have heard stories of plants speaking to humanity, right? We have the, yes. the shamans, the mystics, the, uh, uh, the, the, the mystics in the jungles and things like this, mystics on the mountains and the mountain speaks to them or something. And uh, I know that to be true. It's actually a, a real, a reality because a very dear friend of mine who's a Lakota medicine man, as he was being initiated in, uh, in stepping into this higher role as the, the, uh, the voice of spirit, grandfather for the people, he was out walking through a pasture and he didn't necessarily consider himself intuitive or psychic, but he was aware of that potential uh, for himself and with his teacher. And he suddenly began to hear a high pitched voice and he, and he, and he could hear someone saying over here, over here, look at me, look at me. And he said, it sounded like a little girl, like a little voice, a very high pitched voice. And all he saw in that direction was a sage bush. And his mentor said, 
the first plant that speaks to you will be giving you permission to use its its family, the sage kingdom, really, uh, in ceremony, which is a type of medicine for healing for their people. And he said it was a most uh, amazing experience. He thought he, he was going crazy. And he said the plant communicated with him because he had he had gone through a ritual to raise his spiritual vibration such that he could communicate with the consciousness of that plant kingdom. And I thought that was an amazing story that he shared with me because I want my students to realize that the stuff of legends, there's a reason that we hear about it. There is a reality if you will open yourselves up to and investigate for yourself some of the things that we might think, ah, UFOs, ah, giants in the mountains, ah, light beings coming out of doorways that, that are solid stone. There's a reason these stories exist. So I want to encourage the viewer and listener to really be willing to investigate for yourself uh, and discover that uh, amazing potential. It is so amazing when you start to open up and then you start opening up and you see these things and you sense right. these things and everyone is working on becoming their part of their shaman, their shamanic self. Now they're opening up to their own true potential. And that's yes. what the raising of the vibration of the earth is about. It. It's so Age exciting. Of to, what's that? Age, Age of, of Aquarius. Aquarius. Yes. Yes. It's been such an amazing journey um opening up and awakening and i wanted to talk a little bit about that about what you're going to be a keynote speaker at the expo at the Absolutely. Lake consciousness so. expo you're going to be speaking with reina ishwari yes. on saturday did i say it right, right. yes you did it you did it perfectly. awesome <laughs> thank you and you're going to be talking about that's going to be 11 to 12 30 on saturday of the expo and you're going to be talking about discovering the five keys of your divine purpose can you talk about that a little bit so rena and i or she prefers the spiritual acronym of ishwari and so rena is a very dear friend of mine and a published author and a longtime mentor and and mystical friend of mine and and so we decided to do something as the yin and yang the male female uh uh, uh presentation where you, you receive healing, you receive teaching, you receive some higher guidance. And we just really open, allow each of our audience members to open up in a safe space and to re recognize that it's okay to, uh, to be vulnerable in a group setting, especially when men are present. Because sometimes in society, men are not uh, the most safest to be around. And we know, and I know my demographics is predominantly female and I want them to know they are safe with me. I work in a higher vibration. And so we decided to create something very unique and uh, put together a one and a half hour presentation. I will speak to uh, from the male perspective of the really the five keys of discovering your divine purpose, which really goes along with what I speak about in the book. I just happen to speak more about it in this presentation. And I'm going to give people some things to think about they never really thought about as uh, very simple, honestly, very simple ways to activate uh, their their divine purpose, to discover an inkling even, or possibly one of the pathways for a purpose in life. And we again, we can have multiple purposes. I can work with uh, uh, children in distress or, or the homeless or equine therapy or dolphin therapy or uh, teach people just to stand on stage and, and speak. That is a gift of spirit and learning to be a leader for a community. So I speak about those principles and I'll give you a hint. Gratitude is, is definitely one of them because if you're not grateful for what you're presenting, your, your audience will know you're not authentic. And I think that's probably what my listeners most often say about me is they can tell how authentic I am, how compassionately oriented I am. And I understand the difficulties and the pains and the fears because I have walked them myself. And that's also, I mentioned that in the book, just as a, a mirroring effect to let people know you are not alone. <laughs> you know, we are not, if we're perfect, we're going to have big wings, great hair, uh, have music playing around us, and we're going, but we're going to be in a higher realm. So we're not meant to be perfect. We're meant to make mistakes. And I speak to those little principles to empower the audience. Yeah, it's going to be great. That's wonderful. And um, then you're doing on Sunday from 11 to 12, you're doing um, your Divine Purpose, a Day of Discovery workshop also, correct? Yes, that is going to be, you know, Sherry Lord asked me if I would consider uh, speaking in, in a very 
uh, a singular way, if you will, and as a keynote speaker, because she has uh, read the book and she understands what I'm trying to bring forward for, for the masses. And so I created this, this really a tightened version of my full day program, but this is a, it's called Your Divine Purpose, A Day of Discovery, because I really, really, really want to begin to empower and give tools and techniques so audiences can take those home and begin to journal uh, their points of discovery, what they learn about themselves, what's already there. My job is just to kind of shine in a way to teach you to pull it out of yourself. I'm not there to pull it out of you. I'm there to guide you to pull it out yourself. So I empower my audiences and I teach them about the principle of personal responsibility uh, and that, you know, the God source works through each of us. So we don't need to go to a preacher, go to a priest, go to an imam to ask for guidance, for strength and, and empowerment. We can already do that because we're already manifesting that potential. And during the hour, we're going to have some, uh, we're going to have a big breakout session. Then we come back and we do Q&A, sharing, dialoguing, really discussing what has the audience discovered about themselves that either they had an inkling they knew, but they needed confirmation that day, or a full new discovery, a path of discovery they never really thought about. But somehow the questions and, and the little exercises that I that I have them go through, they'll begin to really just awaken to the innate skills, the values within themselves and the talents. You know, our potentials and our possibilities are already there. We just have to focus them and that focusing is what gives us purpose. And uh, discovering your, your why behind your purpose, that's the fuel. That will get you through all of those Mercury retrograde moments it will get you through closed door opportunities where you feel like the universe is just ignoring you and nothing's working for you. The why is the fuel that empowers you to keep searching, to, to find a new door to go through, to find a new path or a new mountain to climb, to find new people to support you in your journey. That is what your why will do for your purpose. And that's also an, another very powerful exercise that I take uh, in my full days. I take people into that because it that will change their lives. That's what I was going to ask you about. Can you tell people about more of your, because I saw that you have quite a few different classes and mm -hmm. workshops that you do. Can you talk a little bit about more of those? Yeah, so presently, uh, most of my, my public communication and speaking and teaching, mentoring, t it really leans this year around purpose. Because what I noticed was so many of my people coming for intuitive development they were not even in power. They didn't believe in themselves. They didn't believe in the potential of intuitive uh, gifts of the spirit, of their healing abilities, of their inspirational speaking. They didn't believe in themselves enough to be show up on camera, on stage, to share what they love in life. And so everything is kind of behind closed doors. And I thought, I've got to begin to change their mind first to change their lives in powerful ways. So that's why I was, I'm so focused on purpose. However, in addition to all of that, I also teach intuitive development, like I've hinted at, I teach mediumship, I teach psychic development, uh, trance mediumship, which is really what a lot of people now are calling channeling. There are different uh, aspects to channeling and trance that are very different, uh, but it's really at the base of it, it is spirit communication, and that's one of the things that I love to do. We, uh, you know, I love Joseph Labruto, I will say that I knew Joseph. 15 years ago when he was just starting out, he came to my tiny little church in Dania Beach, uh, the Metaphysical Chapel of South Florida, uh, and I've since released it because of COVID. It, 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 we couldn't sustain the business, but uh, I remember when Joseph started, and uh, he would bring through points of evidence for audience members, and their people would burst into tears, tears of, they were really healing tears. They were not painful tears. And uh, people's lives would be changed. And I thought, you know, it's, it's crazy how this guy who is really stepping into his spiritual gifts, he's changing people's lives. We, I've got to do more of this. So I started bringing people like Joseph, and that's how our church exploded and grew over the years. So what Joseph does for the audiences, I have seen tremendous evolution with Joseph over the years. He's a dear friend of mine. I, I've worked with him several times, hosted him. Uh, we speak quite often, and uh, I think audiences are really going to be excited to see that is a potential. And I haven't said this, I was not born with my psychic potentials open. I was trained 
uh, I don't know Joseph's full story. Maybe he was born with his gifts wide open, as many yes. people are. I'm a perfect example of how a farm kid from Texas who knew nothing about the spirit world, God, psychic healing, any of that stuff, never had any encounters. And, and in my 30s, I began to develop my potentials. And I was highly skeptical for years. I fought it. And I didn't believe that what I was getting was real, but I'm a living proof. If I can stand on stage and deliver messages from loved ones or uh, uh, a discarnate mind, if they, as they call it, uh, uh, if I can do it, anyone can do it. So the potential is there. We just have to be willing to trust that God works with each one of us. Yeah. I agree. And, you know, it's, I did, I interviewed Joseph, I think it was last week and he did, he started he started, he said he's been open all his life. And me personally, I, I was open and was intuitive, but there were things that were outside of my comfort zone. Right. And so I kind of shut myself off and then I opened, I could see past lives and things and knew that was real, but then really started opening up around 40. <laughs> so that's what right. with me, it was like, boom. And then it was in my face and holy wow, there's a lot of stuff out here that I didn't understand and had no clue about. Love so <laughs> yeah. that was, for me, yeah. it was yeah. kind of like a little bit of a, you know, the cosmic two by four left cross face and wow, there's a lot more than you realize out there. And so I opened up extremely quickly because of that. Yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah. It's, it's been an amazing journey and I, your, your story has been amazing and I'm so glad to hear Thank it. You. Can you tell Thank people so how much. to find you, how to get a hold of you, how to look up, sure, um, why? Things for you. Absolutely. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. Uh, I think I'm not on Twitter because I'm just not a Twitter type person. But but I will tell you, if, if you look for uh, like hashtag Rev Kevin Lee or forward slash Rev Kevin Lee or the at sign, you're going to find me, Rev Kevin Lee. And my website is RevKevinLee.com. And I'm on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn. And I would love for people to come and be a part of my community and uh, you know, find me on Facebook. They can, I just a couple of months ago activated a new group called Your Divine Purpose and hashtag Kevin Lee. So they can find me in Facebook that way and join and be a part of the community. We, we have so much fun. So definitely, I'd be grateful for people to come and visit. That's amazing. And you have a YouTube channel also, correct? I saw you had a YouTube channel. Yes. Yeah. I definitely do because I, uh, this season, you know, it's interesting how COVID made us pivot. And I decided this year uh, that I would step back into finding people like you and I who have amazing stories to show that we can, we can embody our gifts or we can just embody what we love to ma make the world a better place, you know, bring more kindness into the world. And so I'm beginning to bring leaders and luminaries, as I like to call them, because we are light workers, and also to, to share their lessons. What were their biggest failures and what do they learn from that? What was the most amazing thing they discovered? Or what's the, the, the number one tip tool technique that you can share with our audience today that will really add a nice new trajectory in their life? What can it benefit them in just one little tip? Things like that. I love that. And that's why I created Live with Kevin Lee. So you can find that definitely on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. That's wonderful. And um, I feel like you give a lot to the community and I thank you for all of that, all of that work and so the sharing of yourself and the sharing of your experiences, because we all do go through, it, it's not always easy going through our awakening. And so <laughs> it's not easy. No. And sometimes you're like, I give up. Okay. I forget it. Forget it. I'm done. No. And then you're like, oh crap, I guess I still got to keep doing this. <laughs> we, can't, we, can't be, we can't be the fullest, greatest part, expression of ourselves if we don't go through uh, pain and struggle in life. We are meant to do that. And, you know, uh, think of the, uh, the baby chicken, the little baby chick. If you help it out of its shell, it will die. It will not thrive. And the same with the butterfly. If you try to open the cocoon as it's preparing to emerge, you will actually harm it. It will, it will fail in life. And the same with us, we must uh, struggle and, and discover and sacrifice. And we have, to, it, it's not easy to climb a mountain for a reason, but once we reach the pinnacle, which is that awakening or that new transformative stage, uh, it's incredible the view. It's incredible the the, the, just that high resonance of a, of a new life. Look what I just accomplished. 
and just look what I went through, what I walked through, what I fought through. And you know what? Now I can use that story as a lesson to, to teach others. Keep coming. Just walk with me. Take my hand. Keep going down that path. And spread out your wings, right? Absolutely. Spread out your wings and allow yep. it to come. Allow that divine part of your life to come in because it's waiting there for you. Just have to open the door, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. It's been such a blessing to interview you. you. So can't wait welcome. to <laughs> can't wait to meet you in person. Um, again, so that is the Light Consciousness Expo, and this is Kevin Lee, and he's going to be there all weekend, May 14th and 15th at the Light Consciousness Expo in Sarasota, Florida. We're signing off. Thank you so much. It's been a blessing. Love you all, and have an amazing day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.